This conference will now be recorded. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, on the last class, I think we created a resource group. This is the other one. This is for other classes. This one is the resource group which you created. Right? Under that, we have created two storage account. Right? And this storage account is the normal storage account inside the containers on the landing kept all the files right and we created another data lake storage where we have created the containers and we created the list of folders correct mm -hmm. is up to here it is done yes sir then we created a adf sources on the resource group which is we have given a name and we have just created some pipelines. Okay, let me learn from this time and see what exactly we have done there. Click on that, click on the ah, we have created the data set, we have not created the pipeline. So we have created the link services. Okay. So the first link services is called my blog stories. All the connection details to my blog. Then another link stories I created. This is called my data link stories. Then finally we created two data sets. First is my raw item where I want to take the order.txt file. Okay, and uh, sorry, this is my landing, this is my source where I need to take the file. Okay, so here now see what exactly our job is to up to here. It is everybody is done. If you are not done, it will be very difficult to carry on from the next class. I'm saying very frankly. Okay, same day practice, same day on. Okay, that's our choice. Now let's go to my order items here. Go to my containers, landing, and we'll say first we'll take the order underscore item dot text. This file I want to transfer from my blob storage to my data lake. Okay, so under this first my uh, order item, I will put the file name here. So let's browse it landing then i will select my orders item dot page this way okay fine and in the raw order items which is i'm putting there i will browse it and i will select my raw okay and i need to give this file link here because there is no file available here okay so order yes for items dot text. Okay, so now I have done my two data sources, which I, I want to from where I want to get the data and from where I need to place the data. Right now, finally, after creation of the data sets, we need to create a pipeline. Pipeline is something like which will hold all the data sets and it will transform the and it, will, it will provide the logic so that I can transform the data from here to here. Right? So let's create a pipeline here. So the pipeline name I'm saying PL underscore order landing underscore drop. Lending from the lending folder, it is taking the order from to the row. Okay, this is my 
your pipeline. Now here, if you want to copy from one location to another location, the activity which you need to perform inside your pipeline is called your copy activity. It's nothing but your copy data. It says for the copy, you'll get it. Let's drag it here. Okay. Now select this. Now this one, we need to give a name because if you come to here, you should give a name so that you can understand what exactly you are doing in this case. So I say copy all the items to landing to offer something like that. This will be me. Now on the next page, we have a source. Here there is few options are there. Just carefully observe. There is a timeout. Timeout is by default it is showing the 12 minutes. What will happen when you run this flow? If it is exceeding more than 12 minutes, then this will be timed out. It will not execute and it will time out. So this timed out we can control. Okay. Now uh, like two minutes, three minutes. So default always you stay in a real time scenario, maximum to maximum three to four minutes. Or max if it is a huge data five minutes. So you should define the logic so that your pipeline should run in five minutes. So you can change it. But as of now, it's not required. Now this one is very important. This retry and return trouble. So retry, I will say, suppose I am giving, suppose somehow on the first instance of the pipeline run, it got failed. What could be the reason? So if you give a retry chances of let's take uh, three here. Okay. So what will happen is if one instance is got failed, it will wait for the retry three times. Three times it will try and after that also it failed, then it will say the pipeline got failed. And this one, I'm keeping a zero icon, but three times suppose you keep it and retry interval is within that interval. Suppose you are keeping here somewhere around 180 seconds. So what will happen is under three tries it will take under the three minutes interval. Okay. The first try will happen failed it will wait for another three minutes again it will try if it again fails in a, it will try in a, it will try one more time uh, after three minutes still it will fail it will say permanently it will be failed so this is all about this okay got it yeah yes like uh, when we execute, we don't know when there is like when there is error or retry. So anyhow, we can give one or one or two like conditions in order in return. Yeah, correct. And this two check boxes, the secure output and the secure input, is applicable for the data sensitivity. Suppose you are working with a very sensitive data, mm -hmm. like. Uh, payroll data or any kind of your company organization finance data if you mask this right so it will be the output and the input will be properly secured and there are some inside algorithm azure will provide okay but right now this is not required but you should understand all the parameters now the main parameter here in this case is the source and send source is you need to select the data set so here from where i want to get the data I want to get from the landing folder, right? So this will be my data set. Okay. We'll we'll see this like all these things, not now, but after after this exercise, you will do this. But right now, I'm just selecting very default settings like sort data this. Now I go to the sync here. Sync is nothing but your target. The target I'm selecting my crop. That's it. Very simple. Now let me validate this. So validate in the sense, if any kind of error is available, it will, it will show you. Okay. Now click on the validate. Okay. See if it's, there is a problem. Copy activity interval, retry interval seconds cannot be zero. It has to be written between 30 to 8640. That's the problem. So here. 
So I need to put at least 30. This mm -hmm. one, okay? That's what it is saying. Validate it. So it's saying that your pipeline has been validated. There is no error. Close. And you can still run it. But I would suggest you to save this, then run it so that you will not lose any information. So to save this file, you need to publish. Now to run this, you need to click on the debug on the back. If you click on the debug, it will start running this queue. First, first in progress, succeeded. Okay. And here we have a one details option. If you click on this details, it will show you that from where you are taking the data and from and to where you are storing the data. How the file transfer happened, everything, all this information will be available on this. And let's see, we'll go to our this is my lending folder. I I copied this file to here. So, under this container, under the raw folder, the file should be there now. That's exactly the file got copied, right? So, this is one way to. Copy the file. Fine. Now tell me, you you tried something, right? Now next part, whatever you will tell me, I will do it. I will do it, but you need to tell me. Now from this landing page, I want to take the customer dot JSON file to my data lake. One more time, another file. What I what I need to do? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Or through the steps. Okay, so data set will I, select data set for pipe. Okay, yeah. So, sir, with same pipeline we created with that pipeline we'll copy um, another json file to the lending folder right and sorry data lake mm -hmm. is there now tell me do you need to create the link services no it has been created already Okay, it's not required. Why it is not required? Because it's already established. Yeah. Okay. So we are not changing the uh, the storage. Storage is remain same. So the link service is not required. Now what the next step would be? And to create what? Pipeline. Directly I will create the pipeline. Is it? Sir, pipeline, yeah. we created this PL order landing raw. With the same pipeline, we'll copy the data. Uh, but where is the your source information? It's in, um, okay, One, we'll go in home tab or... So you need to create two data set again, right? Yeah, data set, this data yeah, set is all data. about auto item text. Yeah, you need to create a customer. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, so let's create a new data set. First, it will be my Azure Blob Storage. There is the Blob Blob Storage. Okay. This time it will be JSON file, not the CSV. It will be the JSON because I want to move the customer dot JSON file. So whichever file types you want to move, you just select the based on that. Continue. You give a name. So ds underscore lending underscore custom. Okay. Just give a name. 
link services will be the same. Mm. There will be no change to this. Now this time I have to select my landing page and I have to select my customer dot mm. And I don't want to import any schema. Okay. So this is one of the one data set per creator. Now I need to create another data set mm. for the target as well. Right? So the new data yeah. set. This time okay. the target would be my Gentle. Okay. Correct? Gentle. Okay. Then output will be again the JSON only because you are taking the input as JSON and you are putting in with the file as a JSON as well. Okay. okay. And this is the name called DS. DS underscore landing. Raw. Not landing. Landing, we are taking it. We are putting in the raw. Oh, okay. Let's select my browse raw folder. I don't have any file, I need to give a name. So let me check what is the name customers.json. None. Now we have created. Another two data set, which is landing customer and the raw customer. Okay. Now, let me tell you how to create a separate pipeline. Then we'll see how to merge into a single pipeline. So let's create a new pipeline for this. So I will give it this name of called PL underscore customers underscore landing. Now, the same thing we will do, we will transfer my copy activity to data, right, and I am not giving any name, let's keep the name, so let's see the naming convention, copy order item from landing to raw, so I need to give copy customers from landing to now, sorry, so should be my DS landing customer, right? Exactly the same thing, and the target would be my DS raw mm. customer. Okay, mm. save this or validate it. Let's first validate, no errors, publish. I'm just saving this. And now I'm running this now. Let's do that this. That's it. Now, under your resource group, under your storage, under your containers, on the raw folder, there will be two files now. One is order item just gigs, and the next one is customer location. Right? Fine. Now, this is the two files are done. So, you, you need to do for all the files, mm -hmm. all files, whatever there in the landing, another three. Okay, file, JSON file, to this three files. I will, I, I, I want you to do that because the steps will be simple, the same process. So by tomorrow, I should able to see your screen so that everything will be in place for you. Okay, is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm not doing it because this is a repeated task. Now here, mm -hmm. one thing we should uh, know that. So suppose. I have just created, I transfer two files. One is order item.txt file and customer.json file. So for that, there are four 
data set called PhD. So if you are creating five file transfer, then the data set will be 10, right? And this will be lengthy. Like if you see this uh, data set 10, and it can be increased, right? 10 to 20, 20 to 30, everything will be increased. So there should be a proper structure you should always maintain when you are creating a data set. Okay. So how to create the structure for the data set here? So on this one, create a new folder. Okay. And say this is called my landing folder. Or we can put source folder as well. It doesn't matter. You should give a name, create folder here. And what about the landing items are there, right? Just move it to this. So just click on this, move item to the landing. This is a logical uh, structure, okay? There is nothing in changing inside the data set what you have entered. The settings, nothing will change. It's just like a folder structure. If you remember in Power Query also we are doing it. The group, right? Mm -hmm. Dimensions yes. and facts. Same thing we are doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. This also I am moving to my landing. So that one folder will be there. If you expand it, We'll get all the sources okay the same way we need to create another folder here not here sorry the folder i say raw yeah and i will transfer the item to my raw folder right so this way you can manage your the folder structure organized with spaces. Okay. So this is the first thing. Second, if you see right now, there are two uh, files we transfer to the pipeline. So first is called my order where I'm transferring the order items. Another pipeline I created where I have, I'm transferring the customer. Right. But if you see five files, I need to create five pipelines. That is not ideal because each pipeline is doing the same activity. Like it is doing the copy from one location to another location. It's the same. But can we consolidate everything into one pipeline? Yes, we can do that. So my name should be like this only. It should be a generic name I should give it. So this all files which you are doing it is called all for sales order. So I'm giving PL order landing to raw. That's fine. Now, from the customer, whatever I did it, I just select this copy, control C, and PL order landing raw, just paste it. So now I have two copy activities. The same one. And the setting is not changed. Everything will remain same. Okay. Nothing will change. Now, this pipeline holds two copy activities. One is, which is taking the order item, and putting into the target, and another copy activity is taking the customer data and putting into the target folder. Now let me publish this. Everything, the changes, whatever you've done it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now <coughs> let's run this uh, pipeline. So. These two files are already there present in the target, so it will override, doesn't matter. But if you run this, now this pipeline have two copy data. So what will happen? Which one will run first? Which one will run second? Or both will run parallel? Let's see that. So let's debug this. And if you see, both are running parallelly. It started, all are in at one go only. There is no dependency. So both are running separately. Right? And both will be succeeded. It's fine. So now we have a choice that I will not create other pipelines. I will inside the one pipeline only. I will consolidate all my copy data. Right? Make sense? This is. Mm. Now I will delete this. The other one which I created. Which is the customer one it's not required now let me save this file 
so that I will have this. So by tomorrow, when I come to the class, so you should have an organized structure for lending with all five lending sources, all five raw sources. Inside the pipeline, all the copy activities will be there, all five in one pipeline. Okay, and your storage should be updated. And in the sense, when you go to your data lake storage containers, inside the raw folder, all the file files should be there. Okay, make sense. This is your job needs to be done. This is clear. Yes, okay, sir. sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now let's see what happens is when we have in a single pipeline, you know we have the same kind of activity. It is going parallel. Can we do a sequencer? Sequencer in the sense, I want my first. I need to run my customer, and based mm -hmm. on the that, the second item should run. Right. Yes, we can do that. So, what we can do here in this case, let me just put it here back and forth. So, if you select your pipeline, right, the activity, there are some buttons are available. Okay. Mm -hmm. The one button is called on skip. If it is getting skipped, the second one is called the on success, on fail, and on completion. So, these two are very clear skip and uh, the fail one, but there is a significant difference between a success and the completion that I will take a separate uh, class for that. But right now, we will uh, talk about the on success. So, what we will do is in this case is that we will take the on success of this. So, when this flow or this activity success, it, it successfully completed, then only I want to run the order items. Okay. So, for that, from the success one, just drag a line to your this one. Now save these changes. Now, if you run now, previously it was run both at one stream. Okay. Now, if you run this. Starting with mm -hmm. customer only, it is not running the parallel. So, once that is finished, then your order items will start. See, it is in progress. But once it is success, then your order item started. Right? So, this is called your sequence real activity on your pipelines. Make sense? Yeah. So, um, and you can here, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. so here we choose first activity copy, like we are copying, mm -hmm. but if we want to, like some other operation, some other uh, transformation, then we can also choose in one pipeline or Sorry, we only. Like here, uh, we copying data, but if uh -huh. we want to do any other transformation in the same pipeline, mm. or is it the only first we perform copy and after that, any other transformation? No, no, we can, no, we can do that. Other transformation also. We'll so discuss. Like if, there is a data. There is a data flow. Is there? Uh, next class we'll discuss that how we can integrate so many transformation and dependency also. We can do. That. Yes, oh, we can do. Okay. All right, so this is the one. Now, I think you understand. Now, your job is to what exactly you, you want to do it, you understand, right? Mm -hmm. So, you can put a dependency of all the copies, or if you want to do a separate one, it's up to you. But this is the way we can depend. So, after that, suppose one more copy, one more copy, you can still depend that way. Make sense? This is? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's do another exercise, which is a interview question. Okay, so this is not out of the project. So I out of the project in the sense 
what exactly we are doing it here, right? Lending to raw, then we are creating real. It is completely a project I am doing. It will start to end. Okay. So by the end, it should be come with the solution. But this, what after this one, what I am trying to say, it's just like a test we are doing it for a interval perspective. So for that, what exactly we need to do in this case is that just observe carefully. So you should go to your data lake storage, click on the container, and you should create another container here, and you should keep it like that only. That container is called a test. So anything you want to test, you can do on this container. In other containers, whatever you are created, that is all are specific to the project which you are working on. Okay. So exactly what exactly you need to do here in this case is that we have a store set file. So I will give this zip file to you so that you can extract it. And under this, there are some files are available. So all files are JSON files. Okay. So some files are under this folder itself, like stores in Mumbai, stores under Tokyo, and few files are under your folder, like source underscore London, New York City, one mm -hmm. file is there. So we need to create first this structure completely on your edge of the in the data like storage. Then we will upload all this file, then we will see what exactly needs to be done. So let's create this structure. So let's put the test and create two directories. First, I will say my source and I will create two directories here, target or sync. Okay, now under the source, we need to create another directory which is called my stores underscore test. Hmm. Inside the stores test, as inside the stores test, these two files will be there. This three file is for Mumbai and store. So let's upload these two files. Three files exactly. Those files. Stores test. One, two, and three. Okay. First part is completed. Any questions? So here directory is kind of folder like we are creating. Yeah, correct. Okay. That is a folder. In the data lake storage, as I told you, this is like just like a hierarchical namespace, right? So hierarchical namespace means you can create some directory inside that. So on the on the container, I have two folders. One is my source, one is my sync. And inside this mm -hmm. source, I have another folder, which is called my stores and this test. Under that, I have three files. Now I need to create three folders as well under this. One is London, one is New York, and one online. Let's create a directory here. So I will say London. Inside the London folder, I need to upload my files, not sorry, a directory. I need to upload file which is there under my London folder. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now go back one more folder, get a directory, say New York. Okay, now let me create another directory also, then finally I will upload. The new work, load those files on the new work. Upload it. All right. 
So now this is a structure we are created. Inside the container, we have two folders. One is your source, one is your sync. Inside the source, I have another four direction. This is for storing the test. Inside that, I have three files and three folders. Exactly the same structure which they are in your local. Right? Now, this we need to create it. At any cost, I will provide this file and everything to create it. Now, your job is what exactly needs to be done here in this case is if you go to your source, you go to the source test, right? Exactly whatever the structure I have, including the files and your folder, that needs to be moved to your system. Exactly the same. Whatever they are under, under the stores and the store test, the complete folder structure. Inside that, all the files I want to move to my sync folder. That is my requirement. Make sense the requirement? Is clear? Yes. Yeah. Now, under the same data like Gen2 only, I want to take from my source, source test, whatever there, I need to move it to under the same. Now, tell me how many link services or we want to create any link services here or we don't need any link services. I think we don't need any link services since it's uh, already in our data. data, like, data like yeah. Yes. So we no need any link services. That's clear. Now data set. Yes. How many? Right. Okay. So let's create the data set first. So I need to create a new data set. And this will be my source will be what? Blob. What will you must No, how is okay. why it will be blob? Because under under the data lake gen 2 only we have two folders. Source is source. Inside this source. source and target both are same in the same folder. Under the data link gen 2. Mm. So source will be data lake gen 2. Target also it will be data lake gen 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, what kind of file you are moving? We are calling JSON files. All are JSON files. And then, now give a name. I'm just creating a temporary here because I I want to delete it this one. And I will not store this. This is just for example I'm doing. It. So link services will be that's absolutely this. Now here the thing the file path. File path I need to select a test source source test that's it because from here i want to copy everything this will be my file path i don't want to give any file name because i want to complete i want to move all complete structure right along with the folders so, no? but you have uh, selected the linked service right uh, uh, link services you just select right yeah, but we, I mean, is the connection detail, right? What is link services? Link services is something like where you are connecting, mm. right? So that is data link gen 2. There only I have the data, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get confused now. Okay, this is my DS underscore temp, fine. Now I need to create another data set which is my target. Okay. This is greatly critical now. This little bit tough. So now gen two. Okay. Now here I will say this is ds underscore sync underscore temp. Just move it in the sync folder. This also the link service will be the same one. Here, where you want to store it, you want to store inside the test, inside the same. That's it. Okay. No schema importing. All right. Any questions up to now? No. 
tell me any questions up to here related to the data sets no sir it's a little bit confusing yeah no confusion here what is the confusion we have a source folder here we have a source folder under the link services now you are doing previously you are doing from you are moving from blob to data lake info now under the mm -hmm. data lake info i have two folder source and target from the source i am keeping it and i am putting it into target that's it i am doing it you can also do it Yeah, now clear. Now let's create a pipeline here. Yeah? Say PL underscore temp because I want to create a temp temporary pipeline. Here the copy activity will be very different because the copy here here. I don't want to give any name because it is seen. A source here is very important. If I select the source, I will say select my ps underscore temp. But here the thing is, what exactly you want to use the file? Which file you want to transfer? That is most important. Thing. Okay. So the first option, the file path type. By default, you're selecting the file path in the data set. But if you go to your data source, or the data set, I don't have any file name because I want to transform all the files along with the folder, whatever the files I have under this folder, stores and disco test. So I'm not, I can't give any file name here. So previously we used to give it, right? When we are transferring something here. We are giving customer to JSON. We are giving order item to text. In that case, if you go to the pipeline and we can specify this option, the first option, because the file name already we provided there. But in this case, I need to use the second option, which is called my wildcard file path, and it will take start to JSON automatically. It will take. So whatever there on your source. Start or JSON. Anything which the extension is JSON, it will copy. Make sense this option? Mm. Mm. Okay. What if uh, if the folder contains uh, different kind of uh, files like? Uh, Then we need to create. Uh, we need to create two pipelines. There is no choice. Mm. Mm. Okay, now then the next most important option is called the recursive. This is by default it is active. So what will happen mm. is if you activate this one, right? Let me mm. show you that. This. Not this one. Which one is your research group? This one. So exactly what I'm trying to say here in this case is, you go to your test, right? And another source, we have a proper structure, right? Some files are directly available on the folder, and some files are available inside the folder, like a subfolder structure. So when you are selecting this recursively option, it will read all the data which are there on the folder along with the subfolder as well. So this option, okay, it will check for the subfolder as well. Make sense? This is yeah. Now this is the settings we have done in the source. Let's put the sync target. I'm selecting sync underscore temp. Now here the copy behavior is 
quite important here. Okay, so there are some copy behaviors are there. Let's select. By default, it's a none. Dynamic content will come later in the picture, but right now we'll discuss about these three. The first one is called the flatten hierarchy, merge files, and the preserve hierarchy. Let's select the first one, the preserve hierarchy, and see what happened when we run this. Okay. Now I am done with this pipeline. Let's publish it. Now this is done. Let's validate. Nothing is there. Now let me close this and let me go to the test and the sync. Right now the sync is completely blank. Correct? There's nothing is there in the sync. But let's try to run the pipeline and you should see the structure whatever there in the source. It should be properly maintained. Let's now run this. Okay, now refresh this the test. You got the file exactly. What about there in the source? Right? These two files and inside the folder and the file. Clear? And which file it, we didn't copy it? There is a file in the source called text files.txt file which didn't copy it because we have given start.json file so all the json files are copied whereas the txt file didn't copy it. make sense clear yeah. this is a requirement this is a scenario where you can copy all the files and all the folders so that time you need to select the source as like this the wildcard path and uh, the sync would be your piece of hierarchy. So let's see other options. If I select the flatten hierarchy, what will happen? So for that, let me delete everything from the sync. First of all, let me delete. Is it delete? delete? Yes. So now my this will be blank. Now I'm changing my copy behavior on the target from the piece of hierarchy to your flatten hierarchy okay so in the preserve hierarchy you saw that the whatever the hierarchy was there in the source the same hierarchy was kept in the target as well right yes or no yeah now let's select the other one let me save this <coughs> Now let's run this, validate it. Now run it. Now there will be some strange names will be there here. And why that is there, we will see when we we'll discuss about the partition. Okay, not now. But this is the flatten hierarchy structure. There will be no structure, and your file name also will be something different. Okay. And why these file names are coming? We'll see. So this is called your flatten hierarchy concept. Okay. Make sense? Now let me delete again all this. And I will do another option on the copy behavior it is called the merge files. So the merge files option is like whatever the JSON files you have, whether it is inside the folder 
or outside the folder, it will create a single file on the merge files. So for that, I need to change something on my what you call on the data set. So on the data set, I need to give a file name now because the file name should be there. Otherwise, how it will be merged into a single file? I can't give a without file name, it is not possible. So I'll say merge dot the JSON file on the target data set. Okay. Now I will go to my pipeline here and I will select my merge files option. Okay. Publish. Save this option. Validated debug. Succeeded. Now it will go to your test folder. Do this. Uh, why this name is coming like this? It should not be. One second, let me check it. This most distance and in the target, sorry, I have I think files. I think it should be in a DS sync then, right? Oh, sorry. I have done wrong. Good job. Uh, good observation. On this one, I need to create it. From the source, I should uh, read all the files. Okay. Yeah. And whereas from that source, I should read all the files. From, from the sync, I should give the merge location. Good one. Yeah. Good job. Source is JSON. Sync. Select. And do the merge files, yes, correct. Now, I suppose to be save this file. Let me delete by this time. Now, let's validate it and run this. Now, hopefully, see, this is one file got created, which is the merge.json, and it will contain all the information, every file, whatever there in the folder and even on that. Make sense? So, this is, you need to understand about the copy behavior. Pattern hierarchy, merge files, and your preserve hierarchy. Okay? The first one was now, preserved correct. Yes. First one will preserve the hierarchy from source to target. Second mm -hmm. one will be the fraton hierarchy. There should be some naming, odd naming convention will be there based on the partition. That we'll discuss about later. Partition, what about that? And merge files it. It will if you click on the merge, then whatever the files there on the folder and even in the normal, it will create a merge, completely merge file. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's clear. Okay. Now let's come back to our normal preserve hierarchy and uh, let me go to the ds.m sync.m and just delete this normal one which we've done it. Now I'll go to my file type here and click on the source. Now I have a uh, here. The question was earlier that how we can uh, process if there are multiple files so as you told the, on the wildcard you can do either start.json or you can have start.txt either or right either this file type or that file type i can copy right but i have another choice here 
this is little bit tedious but you can still do it so what we will do the third option on the source this is called the list of files here i need to select a path to the file list so let's select the browse and inside your test inside your source i have a file called files.txt that we have not utilized yet anything let's select this okay the third option list of files i have selected this and i have changed the dsx sync temp to without file name which was earlier we used to merge or addition and under this one i change the change it to this and on the sync i change the page of file that is the three changes i have done okay publish okay all right so now let's test this so under the test let me delete this first now let me validate it and i will run this okay now if you refresh this it will only store the stores and the store mumbai.json file why because this file right the file list right it contains only that name if you keep whatever the files you want to copy here you can keep source.tokyo.json online whatever the files then it will copy everything which it can be txt file it can be any file whatever the list you have on on this file that i am taking as a source okay this makes sense so where you will change it you go to the copy data under the source the next option the list of files and i can put a txt file which can contain the list of files which you want to copy it that is also a possible okay Yeah. Yeah. So this three option you clear it. When you will use this option, the first option, the file path in dataset. Like all the or similar files, kind of uh, same files. No, not similar files. When your dataset have a file. Yeah, name, yeah, yeah. Specific file. Yeah, specific similar file. then when you will use the wild card when you are transferring the same type of file from different from so the same location you want to transform the same type of file what about the files i have json file everything or types of file anything so that i can use the wild card and the list of files i can create a file under that and to specify which are which are the files i want to transform i will just name that file inside that and then i can use that file as this path and i can transform that file in this case it can be anything right yeah this makes sense as you think you are good any questions no Very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now let's let me go to a new thing here. That is called the data flows. So if you if you observe here the copy data, this is a copy activity only. This is just like taking the data from one location and putting into the another location right 
in between if you want to change something suppose what's in my source file i have 20 columns and in the target i want only the related columns like 22 out of that i need only five columns into my target copy data will not be able to help you on that one okay. mm -hmm. so for that we need to do some transformations so if you want to do some transformation like this very simple or very complex then the rescue will be your data flow inside your data flow you can do your transformation <laughs> And finally, this data flow will be available on your pipeline to run. Okay. So, what is data flow exactly? <coughs> First one. Data flows allows data engineer. This is from the definition is coming from your uh, Microsoft site only, site only. Nothing I'm writing extra. So, to develop data transformation logic without code okay second uh, <coughs> data flow will be then Only through, only through, I said only through pipelines. Okay, so another thing, these are the two things, and whenever you are creating a data flow, Azure. internally converts into a Spark code. Spark is a language which you use for your data transformation and everything. So, into a Spark code. So, you don't bother about that, how it is getting to it. And don't put your head what is Spark. But I'm saying, in future, from you are moving to the Azure data to the Azure data bricks, or synapse parent is anything right so that time you, you require the spark python scala all these things you need okay so this is for your future reference but it is a spark code so how to create a data flow and before to that so what is the advantages of your data flow let's let's try and just the first advantage is the data validation so anytime i can validate my data whether that data is correct, the data type is correct, or uh, do I need to change anything? All these things you can change here. Data validation. Second is data enrichment. Enrichment is something like adding a new column or creating a column, whatever. Name. So this is suppose I have a 20 column, I can create some column, custom columns, everything I can do my transformation using the transformation or that is part of the data flow okay third is the performance performance is faster because it will be when you are running the we are creating the data flow it is in the spark code and when you are running the data flow it is inside a spark cluster okay so azure will provide you a spark server inside that only your uh, what you call your data flow will run okay so the performance fourth will be your you can do so much data transformation here then fifth one is the reusability you can reuse reusability and sixth is called my monitor so these are the different advantages we have on the data flow okay so let's see how to create a data flow i will just create it uh, temporary right now and later on we'll see the actual data flow where it is our project okay so where you can create your data flow 
So if we go here, there is a, another entity. So if you see the pipelines, the data set, another part is called the data flow, right? The same mm -hmm. So just create a new data flow. Okay. So here I'm giving a name called df underscore test. Data flow underscore test. Here we have a source, we have the target, all these things you can see. Here the very important thing is this part is validate. If you activate this right, what will happen is Azure will allocate a Spark cluster where this data flow will be run. And what I, I was saying that in your first class that suppose you are going through the Azure free trial also. I told you that some amount might come into your existence. That's very small millibound amount will come into picture. So this is the time, maybe some amount will come into picture on your account also. So when you activate this, right, the Spark cluster will be activated and that is chargeable. Not that much, but make sure that, make sure I'm saying, when you are done this, once you run the data flow, make sure you off that. If you're on this one, right, that will be, it will be continuous running and it will be more chargeable. So make sure you use it wisely. Okay. So for that, the pricing I want to show you something. So in the manage tab, click on the integration runtime. Click on this integration runtime, and we have a data flow runtime here. Okay. So um, there is a page called pricing. It will open up the pricing for your data pipeline. This is for the data flow. And based on the regions, you can check it out. So how much it will be chargeable if you are running for an hour or running for a something. So it's better always. You can go through this. I am not going to go through this. So, but I will always suggest that don't, if you activate this, if you go to your author tab, click on the DF. If you are creating this also, after your first run, just deactivate each and every do a practice then okay so and why it is required to activate it i will let you know after the first thing so now let's create a source so i will create a source here i'm creating the source here and i'm giving a name to the source okay so the source is let's take uh yes One second. Yeah, I have. Okay, let's let's check on the. I have all the data sets. Right? Let me check. I have raw order items. I have the lending order items. Yeah, correct. So output stream name. So let's take test. Test. I'm just giving a name test here, and the data set which I want to select here in this case is that. The DS so I will select my DS landing order. So I will take the landing item from that and I will just put it here. The options are we'll discuss in detail. Don't worry. The by default it will just select the allow the schema chart. That's it. Okay. Make sense? First option is clear. Mm -hmm. Now click on the source option. We will not do anything here. And this projection. This part is the projection. This will be not available until you enable your practice. So here, as I told you that, we can validate. Data validate. We can see what are the columns I have, everything on the flow itself. So for that, we need to activate this so that you can see that what exactly the options are available for. So let's activate this. I'm saying give up time to one hour. That's fine. It will take some time to activate it if you are doing the first time. Once your cluster is ready,
I should have done it before. It is normally it will take some time. Come on. Okay. Before uh, let's let's come this and and I'll tell you one more advantage here. This is your source right. And if you click on this plus right, we'll have so many transformations here. Okay. So we can have a join, we can have a unions, lookup. You want to pivot it, unpivot it, everything you have in the data set, which is not present on your normal pipelines. That's why your data flow is quite important. You can do a filter, you can do a sort, everything. Whatever you are doing on the Power Query, almost everything will be there. Too. Right? Make sense? This is, yeah. We'll slowly do it, don't worry. But Let's first of all that's spark cluster needs to be activated for me because I want to show you this page for you. This projection page. How much time it is taking? Uh, Samir, uh, just now you showed some options, right? What are those actually? Where? Addition, I mean, like, yeah, after, the, after clicking on a plus symbol. And up. Oh, yeah, these are the, all the transformations. Oh, okay. Yeah. Suppose you want to filter some data, you can use the filter transformation. Suppose you want to sort the data. Okay, so so many things. You can have a, uh, there is a cast, is there. You can do some casting. Okay. There is a select transformation, is there. Can do a select so what are the column you want or the any data type changes want now it is ready. now it is ready my cluster is ready now let's reset this position is not coming sorry in the data preview i am really sorry when you activate this uh, splat cluster then the data preview will come into picture okay sorry for that projection is not required data preview here you can refresh it and you can see immediately the data which is there. Let's 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 how the fetch data it is happening. I don't know why it is running slow, but I don't know it should come up. For number of files, like right now we have only four, five files. All like if we have more files for all those, we have to follow these steps. Which step? Like um, creating all the source, like resources and containers and all those things. I'm not getting. What is that? Uh, just uh, uh, like if you have many many more files the same thing is going uh, to happen what gonna happen Which like one? creating creating uh, there are ma many steps when we want to bring the data from source to target then uh, like first we create pipeline and these things mm -hmm. the steps will be same even it's a database, we need to create the pipeline, we need to create the data flows, everything will be same. That's correct. Okay, so now if we see this, immediately we are getting your data preview on this one. Okay, now let me show you something. Let's see. And I, I will just, I will transform from this. I will create another transformation here. I will say sync. So there is a sync transformation, which is the target. Now on the target, let it be the sync one only. Now this time I will select my instance, that's fine. And my data set is this. Not 
this one ds order item ds raw order items right what is the mean this is a confusion what's happening one second what i have selected on this test ds landing order item order item the targets should be ds raw order items okay now this is fine now i have selected my source i am selected my target okay <laughs> let's publish this so that my data flow got activated and you can tell me that this i can do in my copy activity yes you can do that but as i told you the choice would be you can have so many transformation in between from the source to the target in between you can do n number of things right you can enter some data but that will see tomorrow but not now but now again is thing is once your data flow got created the only area where you can run your data flow is in your pipeline there will be no choice here, okay so you need to create a new pipeline so i will tell df underscore test df underscore your test okay and now we can't choose your anything copy data and all but for that i'll say data flow data flow this is the activity you need to follow instead of copy okay we need to select the data flow now and we need to select the data flow here the settings so we select the data flow whichever you selected to do your test okay. so parameter is required no data flow is parameter now we can save this and you can run it and this one this debug option will come whenever you have activated your test the df data flow now we have activated this the spark cluster if it is not activated in the pipeline also this option will not come the debug one the debug data for debug this option will be not available you can't run that okay so i think we can stop it here i will tell you how to run it and how to fetch it but before to that always when you are going off just make sure that from the data flow you switch off this and go in process make sure that you are doing it otherwise for the hour it will be chance okay make sense this is coming from our pocket right so it was not working for organization so if no organization you can switch on it doesn't matter okay okay mm -hmm. okay so i i should stop it today let's see tomorrow in the data process